Welcome to Mahjong Central. My name is Michelle. On this episode of Nosh and Such, I'm going to make a Tex-Mex dip. This is a great recipe that you can make ahead and pull out when your guests come, and it'll be great on the counter for the whole event. It's something that will keep just fine out on the counter. So I think this is a really great recipe. Here's what I have. Refried beans from a can. You can use fresh if you can your own refried beans. I haven't ventured into that territory yet, but I do know some people who do that. Check out Linda's Pantry and the Needy Homesteader YouTube channels. Those are the two that I watch the most. Noreen's Kitchen also probably has some canned refried beans, or at least the bean part, and then they fry it. I, I just don't know how to do all that kind of stuff, so I use can. So that's what we're gonna start with. That's the bottom layer. Then we're gonna put sour cream on it, and then we're going to layer the veggies, which I have here, tomato. I have some black olives and green onions and cheese, and those will be all the layers. So let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. There would be a seventh layer, guacamole, which I'm also gonna make, but some people don't like guacamole, so I'm gonna serve that on the side. So let's get started. I wanted to do these tomatoes first, but I wanted to do it on video because I don't like all the seeds and all that water, so I really carve that out. And I think a melon baller is the best way to do that. You just cut it in half and then you use your melon baller to scrape out that center bit. Super okay. easy. So there it is. And then I'll scrape this out now. So you just okay. dig into it right there like that and just kind of go around the edge so that it releases from the edge and it will just scrape right out. And that way you won't have all the watery bits in your dip to make it all watery. Then you can just cut your tomato into bits. Okay, so there's the tomato. Now for this pepper. This is actually going to be for the avocado uh, and the, the guacamole. So I'm going to cut it in half and scrape out these seeds. Okay, now we're going to finally dice this and set it aside for the guacamole. Then, uh, I need to leave this out for a minute because I have a little bit of cilantro here. And I'm a bit new to using cilantro. And I know um, for, from what I've read that some people think it tastes like soap, but for my sphere, it doesn't. So you don't need to put cilantro in your guacamole, but I like to. And one of the things that I learned is it's very sandy. Uh, it may not be cleaned when you get it from the grocery store. So this is um, what I've seen on YouTube. You basically get a bowl of cold water and you swish the cilantro in the bowl, dump out that water and swish again and do that about six times. And that'll remove all that sand. See. Can you see here? Let me move this. So here's my water and I'm just gonna swish it around. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Mmm. That serrano pepper is emitting fumes. <coughs> oh my goodness. <coughs> That's terrible. Okay, so now I just want to peel off A little bit. Since I only use a little bit at a time, I always get a little jar of water and I put the rest of it, whatever I'm not going to use, in there. And then I change that out every day until I use it up. So this is all I'm going to put in my guacamole and I'm, I'm going to use the leaves with just a little bit of stem. The stem has flavor, but I don't like biting into the stems. So I really just want the leaves for the most part, just a little bit, not much. A little goes a long way, I think, with cilantro, especially if there are people who don't care for it. So I'm just kind of trying to get to the, the tips here, pretty much. And having a little bit of stem in there is fine. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of curl this up into itself. Just kind of roll it up like a sleeping bag. And then I'll just do really tiny cuts. I guess they call it a chiffonade. Now I have learned when you're chopping cilantro, do not over chop or it will turn black and it'll be ruined. I don't know why that happens. I guess it just kind of disintegrates it. So don't over chop. All right, so there's the cilantro. Let's go ahead and uh, make the guacamole first. That way I can get it out of the way. And also, it's good to let the guacamole sit for a little bit with whatever spices you end up using. So I'm only going to use two avocados. Oops. Oh, and save that pit because you can use that to put in your guacamole so it doesn't change color while you're having it out as the appetizer. And then I just kind of slice into it. Be careful though, because you could slice through the skin. So be really careful when you do it like this. You could just squish it out into the bowl and use a potato masher that would be probably safer if you're not confident about this process here because you will cut yourself. Be careful with that. And as far as how thick or thin to cut these, it just depends on whether or not you want a smooth guacamole or a chunky guacamole. I kind of like mine in between. And then I just smoosh it out of the skin. Smoosh is a culinary term. Just kidding. I'm no chef. I'm just a home cook. Okay, there we go, that's good. So now we're going to put in the cilantro and I use the back of my knife to scrape off my veggies. This is something I've learned from someone who made a comment about scraping your cutting board with the, the um, sharp edge of the knife dulls it. So I'm very grateful for that bit of info. I never knew that. So I'm going to save those seeds, really just one of them.
You just need one. One is fine. And then I want to put um, just a few of the tomatoes in there because the other tomatoes I want to use for the, the seven layer dip. And then I'm going to put all of the serrano pepper in. And I think just a little bit of the lime, half a lime, I guess, the juice from half the lime. And then of course the spices, and this is just to taste. I'll show you what I like to do. I like to use this Tony Chattery's Creole seasoning. It's got all kinds of stuff in there. So if you like to use that, be careful with your additional spices because you could overdo it. It's very spicy. And then I also have a little bit of garlic here. Not much, just a little bit, and some red pepper flakes. That's it, because there's red pepper flakes in here, I think. Something spicy in there. That's it. And then I like to use a fork to kind of get things mixed up. I forgot a white onion. Basically, I try to do like a pico de gallo, which is tomato, the serrano or jalapeno pepper, a little bit of cilantro, and then a white onion. Since I don't want to get out an onion right now, I'm just going to use the whites of scallions. That way I don't have to peel an onion and cut it and get all teary-eyed. I've got scallions right here. I'm just gonna use the whites. And you don't need a whole lot of that onion flavor, so. And having a little bit of the green in there wouldn't be bad either. I think I'll throw some of that in there too. Okay, I think that's plenty. Okay, there's the guacamole. Okay, so I'm just gonna set that aside. I'm gonna stick this seed in there. And that way it'll stay green longer. That's what they say anyhow. Okay, now we're gonna start assembling this six layer Tex-Mex dip. I love this can opener. I've never had one like this. It opens it from the top and it just releases the lid from the can. No sharp edges. And it's really easy on your wrist too. It's not too bad. It's from OXO. And then it's got this little beak to take the lid off. Just like that. I mean, when it peels it off, it kind of, reveals that there's a bit of glue that holds the, the lid to the can. So I try to be careful when I pull that out so none of that glue touches my food. So we're gonna get this out of the can and put it on the bottom. And I don't know why, but the stuff on the in the can some of it is kind of soft and some of it is kind of thick i guess so you kind of need to mix it up just a little bit And now 
we are going to do lettuce, which I completely forgot. Let me get the lettuce. Okay, for the lettuce, I have butter lettuce here. You can use iceberg if you want. This is my favorite lettuce. I just like the texture of it. I think it's really delicate. So you just want to lay it out on itself like this, the little leaves, because we're gonna chiffonade this too so that it has kind of a shredded effect. If you put the little ones on top, you can use the big one on the other side and use that to roll. And then of course I forgot my knife. Okay, here we go. So a nice tight roll and then just do really thin slices so that you end up with kind of a shred. And I don't want real big long pieces because it's hard to grab with a chip when you're digging through the dip. So I like to go across as well. So it's chopped after shredding. Chopped, shredded, shredded, chopped, what have you. And then maybe an extra run through because I do not want to have a big string of lettuce falling off of my chip. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And then just made a mess. That on. I forgot to put the sour cream on. So I just pulled all that topping off. I think it'll still look pretty. And nobody has to know, so don't tell anybody. This will be our secret. Whenever I get my sour cream out of this container, I like to mix it up because it's always kind of a funny texture until you whip it. So this is what I do. Whoops. Besides making a big mess, it kind of mixes it up a little bit. I think I need a little bit more. Because you want it to be a, a good layer all the way around. Look, you never even know that uh, I made a mistake. Okay. Now, we're just gonna sprinkle this on top. Nobody needs to know that I made a mistake. So, there. That's ready. And I would just let that sit in the fridge for maybe a half an hour and it will be ready to eat. I'm going to get this all cleaned up while this that chills. Tex-Mex dip has been chilling in the fridge for about a half an hour. So I'm going to dig in for a bite. I'm just going to use this little curly chip. I like to pick these little ones that curl up. They make for a really great dipper. So I'm gonna try to get in there and get a little bit of everything. There's a little bit of the beans, a little bit of the sour cream, the cheese, lettuce, and I'm of course making a big mess. Mm. It's really good. I love this recipe. I'm going to have another bite. We'll try to get some of those other veggies in there. The scallions, the tomato, and the olive. Because as a whole, that's what makes it super good.
Uh, make sure you get good sturdy chips because they'll break apart just like that. Okay, so that has a bit of olive in it. Mmm. There it goes again. It's really good though. All together. <laughs> there. Look at that bite. It's going to be good. Mmm. I love it. The beans on the bottom, then that sour cream for a little tang, and then of course all the veggies. So give this recipe a try at your next Mahjong event. I think it's a really great recipe and it'll sit out for your entire event and it'll be just fine out there. You can make it in advance too, so that's really helpful. Let me know what you think. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, click subscribe and then click that bell so you get notification of when I post new videos. I wouldn't want you to miss out on any recipes that you might be able to use at your next Mahjong game. Between now and the next Mahjong Nash and Such, may all your picks be keepers.